Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fifth episode of spending 200 hours developing a game in Godot, showing everybody what could be achieved if you put in a somewhat considerable amount of time developing a game. This episode is going to be the 75 hour mark, so we'll be going through how the project's changed in the past 25 hours and some of the things I've learned. If anybody is new here, hello, my name is Lee. I'm a professional backend engineer. I've had some experience doing um, websites and UIs in the past, uh, but this is actually my first main project in Godot. So, uh, if everybody could give this video a thumbs up, that'd be great. If you've not subscribed and want to subscribe, that'd also be great. But regardless, let's get into the video. Cool, so this is my project with the main map so far. Everything is very similar uh, to what we had previously. We've got the assets, the menu stuff, the UI stuff. We have a bunch of resources for how we kind of store all our actual data, dialogue, um, and then resources, which is confusingly a bunch of images, things like that. Quite simple. Uh, I've just spent a bit of time cleaning things up and kind of gutting some old things out that I haven't used. Um, and in terms of the actual map, things are generally very similar but the one thing that i have started working on is i have started expanding out into multiple zones now obviously this is something you know essentially like someone's drawn in paint but the idea here is that we kind of want to modulate different zones so i spent a lot of time kind of getting the first zone up to a, a certain standard which still isn't very high but I spent a lot of time on here and you kind of see it works together. And then I've kind of started mapping out a high level thing of, okay, well, what does the rest of the world look like? So I've put out a blue thing here, which in my head is going to be some sort of um, lighthouse. And then I've put a darker green kind of thing up here, which is going to be the next level. We're talking like Viridian forest kind of vibes, stuff like that. So I think this really just helps put into perspective the kind of world that we're building and what the next steps are and it's not just this one little thing here there is actually more to this world and there's also a gap over here for something else that i want to create but i thought i'd just show you guys this because i spent a lot of time implementing technical things which we're going to go into now um but it's also good to remember that there is a world that you're building with story and dialogue and uh we do need to start padding out the more kind of soft things within the game okay so uh, i've loaded the game up the first thing that you'll see is we now have a very rudimentary control screen uh so one of the first things i realized when i gave this to somebody else was the controls are not intuitive and there's nothing that tells you how to do anything so i added a little quality of life control screen in here just to give someone a very basic idea Nice. Um, and so, the first things first, which I've spent quite a lot of time inventing, was we now have a very basic equip screen. Uh, so, I've put in as heads, body, legs, weapons, consumables. Uh, the whole UI needs to be completely overhauled, and how I've done it is pretty terrible. But I can equip a weapon. You can see that my attack is now modified. I can equip a consumable, uh, which needs to be stacked at some point. And then we have a little hood here that shows the equipped items. And if we go into our friend the trader, unfortunately I don't have that much gold, so I've kind of ruined myself, but we can now equip some armor, we have uh, additional health, we have additional attack, and then that is translated over into uh, the little kind of vampire survivors-esque thing. So all the stats, come through into here if I have a weapon or if I don't have a weapon you'll be able to know that I've added a little area to if you can see my health here I've added a little area just playing around with things to heal and I've added an option and the game's crashed okay so we fixed the crashing uh, what I wanted to show you was just we've added in basically something so that you can return to the overworld now and not just stuck in the same place um, a few of the other things that have Done is if you try to attack without a weapon you need to have a weapon equipped and there's a handy dandy little thing for the player just to say okay um, you need to equip a weapon so if you're playing this for the first time you're not going to be confused and wonder why something's not attacking and then finally I've added in uh, an extra NPC and some other things that have a little bit of dialogue which I won't show you guys just so there are some secrets but 
slowly just padding away and adding things in. Awesome, so the first thing that I want to share with you guys is it took me 60 hours to realize that there is actually GD script style guide and it's not just random things happening all the time. Uh, I'm, I'm aware that the styles have changed between version 3 and 4, which is kind of annoying, but I just wanted to reiterate the, the point of having consistent and a predefined style. Um, so when you guys are working on something, and especially when you want to collaborate with other people, it's definitely very useful to have a style guide as a reference and as a source of truth, essentially, of how you want to uh, structure the code, how you want to name things, how you want to declare things, stuff like that. So that when it comes to collaborating with other people, you want to make sure they're all on the same wavelength. And as developers, we all have different backgrounds and we all have different languages that we're used to. So it's very good to just have a reference where everybody can work off the same thing they can approach things in the same way and you stop all the kind of like arguments of you know where do you put the curly brackets or how do you do these things so i'll put a link to the description below uh to the style guide but definitely give it a, a read over because as i said i'm 60 hours in and i've learned little bits and bobs that i didn't even realize so give this a check out so the second thing and this is by far the coolest thing that i found in the past 25 hours is there is a github action to automatically deploy your project as html5 as a github page um, so if you guys are not using git one i highly recommend stopping everything and getting used to using git it's incredibly useful when you want to collaborate or uh, it can save you so much time if you break things you should be using git 100 percent um, and if your project's on GitHub, I'll leave a link to this action below. Um, and what this will do is it will essentially deploy your project as a GitHub page. And so if I click this now, and I'll leave a link to my game in the description, you can all click and load up my game actually in a browser. And this is beyond useful this is insane if you're doing game jams or something you can just plug this in and then you'll have your game ready to play in a browser you can send this to other people all these sort of things so a big part of my play the past 10 hours is people are actually starting to load up my game and interact with it and it's made me realize all the things that i've missed uh a part of my project so for example some people, I gave them the game, and they instantly walked out of bounds and got completely lost in an ether of grey. Um, and so what I had to do was I had to put in world collisions. Someone else loaded up the game and they had no idea how to do anything, how to press anything, so I added in the control screen. Someone else loaded up, blah, blah, blah. You get the gist. Putting it in front of people is awesome, and using the GitHub Actions is such a simple way so that now, every single time I push to my main branch the game automatically gets deployed and updated. So, like I said, the link will be in the description. You guys can check out the game as it is right now, bugs included. So the next thing, guys, is if we go into editor settings, and this might vary based on the individual who's doing this, but if you go to editor settings and you search for external uh, text editor, you can use an external editor. So I have enabled VS Code for my uh, game now. And if you want to do this, this is entirely up to you. I know a lot of people do like the Godot editor, but for me, I'm quite used to VS Code, the theme, um, and I feel like when I load actual code into VS Code, I just have a better, more high-level understanding of the code, and it just looks visually um, a lot more kind of approachable and digestible. So if you guys are used to using external editor, give it a shot, see how it goes. It's definitely not perfect. Um, you have to have Godot still open and obviously editing scenes and stuff, you need to do that in Godot. So you tend to switch around into different programs, which is not always ideal. Uh, but I guess one small benefit of kind of VS Code, which isn't really related, but you can still open up the scene files and see kind of what's under the hood. And there are some specific quirks with how Godot works in terms of how it references different things. Sometimes opening up the TSCM file in an actual text editor uh, can solve some issues because you might have to change IDs or how things are mapped. So it, it's it, it's something. Um, whether, got, whether or not you guys 
want to do it like this. I'm not sure, but give it a try and tell me what you think. So I think that uh, pretty much concludes today's episode. I just want to give a shout out to everybody. And I just want to remind everybody, um, you know, when you're working on these games, you put a lot of time and effort into these things. Make sure you look after yourself. Um, I know personally I've suffered from quite a lot of burnout. And so it's always good to take a, a little bit of a break away from things and kind of get your mind off things. And then make sure you come back at it and you continue on. But uh, I believe that's everything for this video. So uh, thanks again, everybody. And I'll see you guys next time.